Welcome back. In this next update, I focus on accessory parts that need to be transferred over or serviced. Click on the link in the top right to see where this project began. Installing the power steering pump is pretty simple, but they can get very dirty, so a quick clean gets it looking like new before installation. The bottom line can be connected and sensor torqued on. As usual, the torque specs will be in the video description for you. Now, because the replacement engine was only a long block, I'll also need to transfer over the alternator. With all that done, I can fill the engine up with oil so that I don't forget later on. Now it's an exciting point in time. Now the engine back in it, it's time to put some fluids back into everything. So I've already put some engine oil in there and I've spun the engine around a few times to get that oil pumping. Now what I wanna do is do the transmission fluid plus the bevel box as well as uh, get the brakes back. So I'll probably need to do a VD VCDS brake bleed procedure as well as get that clutch pedal fuel back. Before removing the gearbox drain plug, it's important to ensure you can remove the gearbox fill plug. So crack that first and then go ahead and drain the oil. You also want to drain the oil at the bevel box. I ended up using just under three bottles of GL4 gearbox oil which comes in these handy containers that have a spout. I was able to poke a large diameter air tube into the filler hole and pour the oil directly into the tubing. Once you see a steady stream of oil coming out of the filler hole, quickly remove the tube and replace the plug. Time to service the rear diff oil. Again, use the same method as before where you crack the filler plug first before removing the drain plug. It's tight getting to the filler plug so I use a short hex bit like this plus a spanner on it. I first put the spanner on the hex section, then put the spanner with the bit into the filler bung and crack it open. Next is getting the clutch back into action. This is the clutch bleeder block. Remove the cover for the bleeder nipple and find yourself a helper. Fill the brake fluid reservoir with new brake fluid. I needed to fill the bottle a few times before seeing fluid drip out of the clutch line. Once I could see it dripping out quickly, I inserted the clutch line back into the bleeder block. Now grab a small bottle with some air tube or silicon hose that can fit over the bleed nipple. A 9mm spanner and your helper for this part. Attach the spanner and hose to the bleed nipple and have your helper pump the clutch pedal to start bleeding air out of the slave cylinder. Yeah, you're going to have to bring it up by hand. I'll put it up. Yeah, Once all the air is out and the clutch returns and you have no leaks, you're all set. Stop. Now pump it. Does it stay or is it still getting yeah. sucked? Stays. Up? Yeah, up. Um, pump it a few more times. Is it coming back? Yeah. Now that all the fluids are good to go, I'm going to upgrade the dog bone. This is definitely a requirement since the hybrid Franken turbo is connected to a 3 inch downpipe. The polybush dog bone bushes will ensure the engine doesn't rock back and forward which can make the bigger downpipe hit and rub the subframe. First remove the long bolt that holds all of the bushes into the assembly with a 16mm socket. There's a threaded nut that sits inside the middle of the dog bone so make sure you don't lose that as it falls out. This is how the dog bones assembled. End cap, slotted bush, middle section, oblong bush, round bush. Removal of the old parts is super easy and you can see just how flat they are. Next step is to just slide everything back onto the dog bone.
on reassembly, you'll find that the long bolt no longer threads into the little nut easily, and it helps when you put it in the correct way, of course. This is how the bolt goes through everything and into the nut. You'll need a vise to compress the assembly down just enough to start the threads. It might explode on you a few times, but you'll eventually get it to stay in the vise. Once started, you can use a ratchet to get the bolt all the way in and remove it from the vise. Removing the round bush is really easy. All you need to do is use a 24mm socket and hit the old bush out. Install the poly bush with the insert and pry the black arm off from the OEM bush. Once that's done, you can get under the car and install the refreshed and upgraded dog bone. Torque specs are in the description below and be careful not to force the gearbox bolts in otherwise you risk stripping the soft aluminium threads. So that's it for this round of the Audi TT restoration. Thanks heaps for keeping up as things get more and more exciting. To see the rest of the restoration videos, click on the Audi TT Mark 1 playlist and remember to like and subscribe for all future updates. See you next time.